Welcome back everybody, this is Eric here, Thyrac Veteran 8888, and today we are going to do a complete Glock disassembly video. Uh, Glocks have quite a distinction for being one of the most common and easy to service handguns out there. They're very, very easy to work on as you're going to see. I'm just going to work in real time. If you guys get stuck or if you need to review something, just rewind the video and watch it again. Uh, I'm going to try to make this as simple and clear to understand as humanly possible. You're going to begin by dropping the magazine from the firearm. The magazine release is located right here. It's this button. Push it in. You should know that. Magazine's empty. Pull the slide to the rear and visually inspect the chamber. It's empty. To disassemble the pistol, squeeze the trigger. Relieve the tension. Just a little bit, cheat the slide back about like that. These two little tabs here on either side of the pistol, you're going to pull them down like this. See, they've got some spring tension. All right, so pull down, allow the slide to go forward. We're going to start with the slide and we'll go to the frame last. I'm going to set the frame to the side. Pull the guide rod down. It's a captured uh, guide rod assembly. You should not have to disassemble this any further for everyday cleaning or inspection. Make sure it's not messed up or boogered up or anything like that. Throw it to the side. Same thing with the barrel. You can see it just drops out. So when the gun unlocks, you can see the unlocking action right there. So just push it on down and it just drops out. This particular gun has been Nibixed. Uh, this is a Davidson's exclusive. Your gun will probably be black with a tenophore black oxide coating, which is fine. Uh, disassembly process is exactly the same for the gun regardless of the coating that's on the slide. Okay, to remove the back plate. Now, I would not remove the sights for everyday cleaning. Uh, we have a video on sight installation if that's something you're curious about. Uh, be sure to check it out. To remove the back plate, take the striker assembly, go ahead and pull it out. You'll notice that the firing pin stop will kind of spring up like that when you pull the striker back. Pull it back so you can get your punch in there. This little sleeve right here, you're going to want to lift, push it towards the face of the slide like this. Okay, see how I'm removing that tension? What it's doing is that sleeve is moving forward and allowing this back plate to clear. That tension is what holds that back plate in place. So I'm going to pull it towards me like that, and I'm just going to push. It usually works best to put the face of the slide down on the bench like this. All right, so again, push down, and your back plate pops right off, okay? There's nothing that's going to fly out in your face or anything like that, but you'll see right here that you've got the striker, which just comes right out. And actually, this sleeve right here usually doesn't come out, but it actually goes all the way down in there. This won't come out normally, but because this slide has been nibixed, it's probably real slick and it allowed itself to pull right out. That's fine, but just know that that goes all the way back down in there. And when you reseat the striker, it'll push that on back down in there. So don't worry about it. Throw it on the bench. All right. This little guy right here, lift him up. This is the spring that powers the extractor and the rod that powers the extractor. All right, to remove your actual um, extractor, the best thing I, I can recommend, in this case, I've got a magnetic mat right here that'll catch the firing or the striker stop and spring. So what you do is you can either like wrap it in a towel, but just grab right here, push forward, kind of like this, and everything, look at that, just pops right out, okay? All right, we're gonna disassemble the striker itself Typically, you shouldn't really have to do this, but the reason I'm covering this in the disassembly is because some of you guys might be adding some like performance enhanced parts, such as aftermarket strikers, aftermarket springs, uh, maritime cups, whatever. Uh, so to do that, use your slide as a disassembly tool. You'll just take and rest the edge of the striker right there. Use that to compress the spring and this is a two-piece cup. Getting it off is the easy part. Getting it on is a little bit of a chore, especially with these gloves. But you see it's a two-piece cup assembly that you can probably see right there. Okay, you got a pair of cups that just squeeze together and it works kind of like a, 
a grommet to hold this thing in place. Slowly decompress the striker spring. Okay, there's your striker spring. And simply the sleeve for the striker itself just comes right off, just like that. So that is a completely stripped, less sights uh, slide. We're going to move on to the frame. Set your parts aside, clean them, inspect them, change them out, polish them, play with them, take pictures of them, whatever you're going to do. And then when you're ready to put, get it, put it back together, we'll get on to that part in a moment. Let's go ahead and disassemble the frame. Okay, so here's our lower. Uh, the frames on these tend to be the area where a lot of people get confused easily. They don't quite understand or maybe they're not familiar with it. It's a lot easier than you think. Uh, we have a magazine in it right now that I put in just to show a few things. One is the slide stop. On the last shot, the slide, when it locks to the rear, you can see that there's a cut on the front of the follower of the magazine that pushes the slide stop up. You can see when that magazine locks in place, that is what locks your slide to the rear on the last shot. So you can see that geometry quite well. Right here you can see your ejector, which is this piece right here. All right, There's all kind of aftermarket parts you can change out on this thing. And, and these suckers are really, really easy to mess with for the most part. Uh, with a little bit of basic understanding, you can, you can pretty much be an expert on your Glock in no time. So we'll drop the mag back out. And I'll tell you what, before we disassemble the frame, we'll go ahead and disassemble a magazine. So for the mag, you're going to decompress the follower, which I've actually already decompressed it a bit, and it's kind of jammed in there, but that's fine. We're disassembling the magazine. Push in and decompress. It helps to have like maybe a little short stubby punch, like this little guy right here, this Gracie. Push in, and then push out and away. <clears throat> okay, sometimes they're a bear, guys, I'm not going to lie. All right, so getting the floor plate off, you can see the way the arrangement works is you've got the magazine spring and this little plate that's under the actual floor plate, and it's got this little divot in it that just keeps your, uh, your floor plate from popping off. And guys, these things are a major bear to get off. They're not easy. Remove those, and there's your follower, magazine spring, and magazine body. You can see it is a metal-lined magazine. All right, pretty simple. We're gonna set it to the side, move on to the frame itself. There's pretty much three pins that hold the entire gun together. Okay, very simple. Uh, just grab yourself a little dead blow mallet or a small hammer, whatever you wanna do. And the tightest pin in the gun should be this pin right here, this little skinny one. Uh, this is actually a pin that the recoil block actually kind of bears against. So you'll notice that in some of the, the Glocks that are out there, you'll see ones that are like a two-pin a two pin gun, a three-pin gun. They added that third pin to add some rigidity and strength to the system that they didn't feel was inherently a part of the gun earlier on. They, they, that's one improvement that they made was adding that third pin to add a little bit of strength. So with that being the, the, the tightest pin in the gun, go ahead and drive it out first, which shouldn't be bare tight, guys. All right, so I am using just a armorer's block here from Brownells. You can see it's a slotted pin with two heavy ends, and that's just to allow for a good tight fit so nothing moves around in there. All right, so this second pin shouldn't really require a whole lot of grief to get it out, but you are going to need to lift up on the slide stop to compress the spring that kind of powers it, and also you want to kind of wiggle it. So what you'll do is just grab it, pick it up, kind of wiggle it a bit and there you go it should just pop right out you can see it's slotted all right so it's kind of hard to get these pins mixed up actually it's impossible to get these pins mixed up at this point your slide stop should just kind of pull right out so there's that you can see the spring that powers it um, in terms of glocks and parts that break sometimes you will break a slide stop uh, they've been known to break you can see it's just a piece of uh, basically a stamping so it's not an incredibly robust piece, however, it's very, very rare that one breaks, but I have seen them break. So there's that. In terms of Glocks, what I would do, I would keep spare strikers laying around, and I would keep spare extractors, and I would keep spare slide stops. Everything else, you're generally not going to have any kind of an issue uh, out of them unless there's just something silly going on. All right, so the third pin in the gun is back here and it retains this whole assembly back here. And you'll see how it comes out in a moment. It's relatively modular. 
you won't have to hit it hard. Uh, you do want to probably give it just a little bit of a... You saw that was just a light bump. I'm not using a lot of pressure. I'm basically just using it to help kind of persuade uh, everything a little bit. So there's that. And you can see the pin is just a straight pin. It doesn't have any taper and it doesn't have any steps in it. So your rear pin is, is flat and featureless. The smallest pin has two flanged edges on each side. And then your fattest pin has two little cuts in the middle. Doesn't matter which direction, they're unidirectional in terms of how they go in the gun. All right, so to go ahead and continue with disassembly, we got our three pins out. Careful with this ejector because it is a little bit sharp. You don't want to cut yourself, but you should just be able to simply lift it up and this whole assembly comes out. Now, what I'll do is kind of grab the trigger and push up and look at that. Our block, it just pushes it right on out. So there's our recoil bearing block and I just use the trigger to kind of help persuade that out of there. You shouldn't have to hit it or slam it or pry it out. You don't have to do any of that. Pull all three pins out, pick up on the trigger, and it'll, let, it'll gently lift the block out, no problem. All right, so here's your trigger bar and everything here, all your guts. Uh, your frame is relatively stripped. I'll tell you what, uh, we're going to go in order. I'm going to set the frame aside for a moment, and we'll go ahead and disassemble this uh, unit right here. So the connecting bar, which very rarely do they break, but you can see it is a stamped part. And, uh, you know, they, they can break. We're just going to lift up and out. Kind of... It's one of those things that's kind of hard to show you. You just kind of have to play with it a little bit. But you want to rotate like this. Lift up. Pay close attention to the orientation of this spring. You can see the hook goes through it to the front and through the rear the hook of the spring loops in and back around facing back that way. So mind the orientation of that spring because that's going to be important for when you put the gun back together. What you want to do is grab the trigger bar and pull forward a little bit, let the spring stretch, it's okay, run it back like that. If you want to separate all these components you can, rotate it to the side and very carefully separate it. If you draw, you really shouldn't have to change anything with this particular arrangement here. If you want to change out the uh, trigger bar and all that, that can be done. Uh, we're not going to go over that because for, for everyday cleaning and inspection of a stock Glock, that's not something you're going to have to worry about. If you're going to buy an aftermarket bar, aftermarket trigger bow or whatever, uh, they'll include instructions on how to remove it. We're not going to go over that here because it's not necessarily overly important. Um, if you grab a punch, you can pretty much just push this one piece right here out. You can see that this punch, being a Glock-specific armorer's tool, is perfectly fit to where I should just be able to push that guy right out, okay? That's pretty much it. So there's your ejector and this whole assembly, all your return springs. Okay, so to finish stripping the frame, what we're going to do, we can, I'll tell you what, we're going to go ahead and remove this little guy here. It's real easy. Just uh, go in from the top, push all the way down, and push over to one side. And it should just kind of find its way out, kind of like that. Okay? Real simple. The spring that powers it is actually a leaf spring. You don't have to remove it if you don't want to. You can if you want to. Uh, I wouldn't, okay? So that's pretty much a stripped frame. You can see that the rails that the slide rides in are integral into the frame, so they don't come out. Uh, they are made into the frame. You can see there's a dot matrix back here on the inside of the frame, and I'm assuming that that probably gives Glock, if they were to scan that dot matrix, just like on some of the Smiths, it gives them quite a few ideas uh, for when this gun was made and everything like that, and that's probably a quality control thing. One last thing to remove on this uh, frame is going to be the magazine release. And it's going to be difficult to show you because it's all the way up in there, and to get to it, it's not a big deal, but the best thing to do is just come in from the bottom. And there's, to best describe it to you, there's a little, basically just a, <laughs> it's literally just a bar that has a little bit of tension that holds on the magazine release. So unlike a Smith & Wesson M&P or other guns of, of its nature, 
you cannot switch the magazine release around to make it completely ambidextrous on a Gen 3, okay? This is a Gen 3 pistol. All right, we're going to come in from the bottom, and we're just going to take a hooked scribe right here. This is a Gracie scribe from Brownells, and we're going to push it over and lift up, and we're going to pop that little guy out of there, and it can be a bear. You know, you, you really shouldn't even have to remove this unless it's broken or galled or something like that. So basically, to put it into perspective, I'm going to remove this magazine release. And you can see that there's just a little leg right here that that spring pushes against like that to actuate the magazine release. That's it. It's very, very, very simple. You can reach down in there with a pair of pliers. If you want, if you need to remove that, that spring, that basically that bar, you can reach down in here with a pair of pliers and you can grab it. And look at that. That's what it looks like. You can just pull it right out. It's literally just a piece of basically like drill rod or spring stock. And <laughs> that's it. That's all that powers your magazine release. Okay. It's got a little bit of tension in there. It's, it's it put at an angle, and that's it. So there's a stripped Glock. Uh, do what you're going to do. And uh, pretty much at this point, we're going to move on to put it back together. There's a completely stripped Glock. Okay, so we're going to go back together. Um, it's a part, and we're going to turn this pile of parts into a gun. All right, really simple. So going pretty much in the opposite direction of reassembly with some or of disassembly with some slightly different uh, steps involved. All right, so we removed the spring that powers our uh, magazine release. I'm gonna grab a pair of pliers and just push it back down in there. Which, uh, guys, I'm not gonna lie, is not really something you should have to do. It's just one of those things that I thought would be important to show you guys in case you need to do it. Um, never hurts to know what's going on with your gun. Never know when you might have to make a, a little bit of a modification or whatever. All right. So magazine release goes in from this side. It's going to kind of want to, actually it's the wrong way. It's going to want to butt up against your, against your spring. So what you're really going to want to do is grab your hook scribe again and you're going to set the spring up out of the way kind of to the front a little bit and we're just gonna just like that okay and then the spring goes back in its little groove you'll hear it kind of snap in place if you hold your mouth right and there you go and you can even at this point even with the frame completely stripped if you want to test for your magazine function I haven't even reassembled the magazine yet but I can still make sure that it's going to go in and drop free so everything looks good there even with a strip magazine okay so there's that we're going to put our disassembly bar back in which is dead simple you want to be mindful of the way this thing's designed you can see there's a little cutout here on the bottom and that cutout is where that little leaf spring rides in to keep it from moving side to side and, and coming out of the gun when you're shooting it don't put this thing in upside down or you're going to have uh a bad day all right so go ahead and compress push her in and if you'll listen you'll be able to hear that spring click into place against that flat on it all right there you go okay so there's that back in place we're going to reassemble this guy I mean a lot of this stuff just goes back together with hand pressure you shouldn't even really have to even hit it or smack it See that just pushes back into place there. All right, and then same thing with our trigger bar. Remembering what we mentioned before. It's one of those things that, especially with the reassembly process, it can be a little bit of a chore to kind of figure out what exactly works for you and, and what makes sense to you. But it's something that you'll find out um, as you go, like the way that you want to do it. It's different for everybody. Some people have a lot of little hacks and tricks and things uh, that they do with the reassembly process that makes life a little bit easier. Uh, people that might do it all the time, literally, uh, if you're an armor or whatever, if you're doing a lot of stuff. I'm going to give that just a slight little bump. 
All right. And we are going to, I always have to hold this thing in a manner that allows me to visualize how it goes back into the gun. I don't know if many of you are like that, but I am. Uh, you're going to go in kind of at an angle just like that. Okay. It's not rocket science, but some people get it a little bit funky. So again, paying attention to the way that this spring skewers down, the rear one skewers up. You notice that I rotated it back around. So we're going to kind of give it a little pull and it just bumps in like that. Okay, so again, just like that. See this angle? You can even just pretend, like lay the ejector against the, raw, the, the, uh, the uh, trigger bar and just come in at that angle till it clears and there it is. You'll kind of pinch it and hold it together when you put it back in the gun. Not rocket science, uh, just one of those things that, a little hack, all right? So we'll go ahead and replace the trigger, trigger bar, and the whole assembly that we just put back together. It should drop right back into the gun without any form of difficulty or persuasion required. The trigger will naturally kind of rest in the rearward position, which is fine. Go ahead and take your locking block, and if you're confused, and some people do get confused about this. Think about where these two pins are and where they actually skewer the block. So you can see the, the, the outlay of the pins. That guy just drops in there just like that. Okay, so see this position? We're just gonna drop it right in. That's why when you're removing uh, the trigger assembly, trigger bar, all of this, that trigger just bumps up just like that, and see it just pushes it on up. So that's not a problem. You don't have to remove that, uh, that, that block right there if you don't want to. Now here's where things are gonna differ just a little bit from disassembly. When we disassembled the frame, we actually um, pulled the tightest pin out first. You're gonna put the tightest pin in first, okay? You don't wanna put the, lower, the bigger pin in first. So I'm gonna show you why in just a minute. But before we do that, we're actually gonna grab our featureless pin. And just for, just for completeness sake, we're gonna go ahead and drive it into the rear, our third pin in the rear. Pinch right here, hold it down nice and tight, and drive it flush with a mallet. You might wanna go ahead and just make sure it's even and that it's not protruding on either side of the pistol. You can see it's, it's hidden by the frame and it's holding everything in there just like it needs to. So put your skinny pin in in the top, drive it in, okay, and just make sure it's kind of even. Look at either side of the frame, you can see that the pin is not in as far on this side and there's a little bit of an inclusion there, that's fine. Go ahead and push it in just a little bit further. And it won't really like bump or make any kind of a, a racket or noise or it won't click in place or anything like that, but just visually check and make sure the pin has equal space on either side so it's making equal contact on either side of the frame. Grab your slide stop. The slide stop spring, which is this tiny little kind of leaf spring, is going to bind against and, and push against that, that thin post. So you should be able to literally just grab it, push it in there, just like that. Okay, to put the, the fatter pin in, all you're gonna do is, just like you took it out, you're going to push it in and you'll feel it kind of contact the slide stop. Grab the slide stop and kind of wiggle it and just push in with a little bit of hand pressure. You should not have to force this pin. Don't hit it, don't smack it, it should go right in. You can see that simply the slide stop, the spring is, is kind of resting against and somewhat powered by the geometry of that thinner pin. So you can see everything works fine there. All right, uh, one thing you do want to do is just grab your uh, punch or whatever and just push that pin on home. You should feel it kind of click in place. It shouldn't really give you any grief. Yeah, so it'll kind of come to a stop. So you've noticed that those components have kind of gone in there and they've come to a bit of a stop. Now that's what you're looking for. Okay. All right. And we're just ch checking for trigger function. I'm actually just physically resetting uh, the trigger by hand to make sure everything looks good. 
uh, I am like 99.999% sure that everything on this frame is good to go and we are fine there. We're going to go ahead and reassemble the magazine, which is very, very simple. You can see the shape of the follower running in the similar shape of the magazine body. Replace it and you're going to grab the, basically kind of looking at the way that the mag, the floor plate rides on there, you want the following plate to kind of follow that contour and you're going to compress it. And this is kind of difficult to do with these gloves on, but I've kind of gotten into the habit of wearing these gloves when I do this kind of stuff because one, you don't want to get oils from your hands all over the piece and two, you just, you know, don't want to do that. So you can see that I've just compressed it. The following plate to the actual magazine floor plate is in the shape of the base of the mag so it's not like you're going to get it backwards or anything. Just make sure that little tit is out so that it interfaces with the actual mag floor plate to allow it to stay in place. They're relatively easy to reassemble but they are a bear to disassemble. There it is. Check your magazine fitment. Make sure everything looks good. Remember earlier we notated that the slide stop rides up like that. That's perfectly normal. Mag ejects nice and free. The magazine release doesn't bind or move against anything, so our frame is good to go. All right, we're going to reassemble our striker to move forward with uh, reassembling the slide. Our sleeve, again, goes backwards like this. Okay, your spring. All right, back over the top, just like this. All right, again, using the channel for the striker and allowing the striker to rest like this, we're going to compress the spring and we're going to carefully put our cups back in place. And hopefully you can see this. You can just kind of rest them in there and uh, it'll be a little bit of a chore, especially in my case, I'm wearing gloves and trying to do this in a manner that you guys can see it. The cups drop right in place, squeeze them together. Gently relieve the pressure off of the striker and you have a reassembled striker ready to drop back in. Uh, but we're not going to do that just yet. First, we're going to replace uh, the firing pin or the uh, striker block and uh, extractor. Okay. So basically, just take the extractor, set it in there. There's a little groove that it rests in. It's kind of hard to get it wrong. And then you can see. Most of your springs that are in a Glock are going to be kind of a gray color. That's how you know it's pretty much a factory spring. Any of your performance springs, kind of cross that bridge when you get there. All right. Don't jostle this around too much because the block for the striker is going to also hold uh, your actual um, extractor in place while you're reassembling the pistol. Okay. That sleeve that I told you about earlier that's not supposed to come out, sometimes they will, sometimes they won't. Don't worry about him, just put him on in there. And you'll feel it kind of start, again, grabbing your handy dandy Glock tool or punch. Uh, you'll just go ahead and seat it home. It should not offer any resistance. Replace your striker. Okay, striker goes home. What I would do to ease in the reassembly process is I would go ahead and replace the spring and rod that powers the extractor. Go ahead and get him back in place. Actually, that is backwards. You want the rod to like that. Okay, you'll have the little spring exposed. That's fine. Take the slide and lay it down like this. Slide forward, rear up. Grab your rear plate. And what you want to do is I normally grab like kind of a fat punch or kind of a larger punch of sorts. But you can use, like in this case, um, you know, we've got this Glock tool right here that also has like a 3 uh, uh nut driver here for the front sight. You can grab that since it's kind of a larger bearing surface. Compress your striker sleeve below flush and you're just going to start your back plate into place. The back plate will capture it, then invert it, use the punch, compress the rod that powers your extractor and push it into place and it should lock into place. Take the barrel, replace it, guide rod assembly which is completely captured and replace it. And we're going to reassemble the pistol and perform a functions test. 
line up the line up the cuts in the slide with the uh, recoil bearing surfaces of the frame, the slide rails, frame rails. Cheat it back. All right, and you'll see your disassembly notches kind of push up and hold everything in place. All right, make sure everything's good. And that's really about, about it. Make sure your mags lock in and drop free. Okay. Looks good there. Make sure your uh, magazine locks the slide to the rear in the last shot. And uh, of course you would lubricate and clean the gun before, prior to, to reassembling it. Uh, but that's pretty much your Glock in a nutshell. Just about every Glock that you're going to deal with is going to be exactly like uh, what we showed here. Uh, that should point you in the right direction to allow you to take care of your gun uh, in, a, in a proper manner. Make sure it's going to stay shooting and stay clean. Uh, Glocks are a very robust gun. They're very easy to use. They're very easy to maintain. And they're even easier to, to perform your own armoring on. I mean, there's really not much to a Glock. So there you go. There's your Glock disassembly, reassembly. Get out there and try it. Get your hands dirty. And there you go.